Creality Sonic Pad is advertised as a plug and play solution to speed up your 3D printing without losing any quality. In this video, I'll show you how accurate that claim is, as well as showing you some of the main features of the Sonic Pad so you can see if it's right for you. I was sent this Sonic Pad by Geek Buying as they wanted to see what I thought of it, but like all of my review videos, I'm under zero obligation on content. This means that I'll show you any faults along with any positive aspects. If by the end of this review you think you might want to buy one of these, then as one of my viewers you have access to a special discount code that you can find in the description below. The Sonic Pad is delivered in a very smart box and is packaged in a way that makes you feel like you're unboxing a new smartphone or iPad. It has a 7 inch touchscreen that takes up the whole of the front surface and has multiple ports on the side and back. Four of the ports are USB, two on the back and two on the side. In addition, there's also power, ethernet and sensor ports, as well as flip out stands on the back. In the box, you also get a manual, a couple of leads, a power supply and a couple of adapters. The first thing I did was plug in the power supply and turn it on. After the usual basics like selecting your language, location and accepting terms of the privacy policy, the Sonic Pad will ask to connect to either a Wi-Fi connection or instead you can plug in an ethernet cable for a wired connection. Once you've added a connection, you can move on to setup with your printer. All pretty easy so far, however, it was at this stage that I started to question the validity of Creality's plug and play claim. You see, for the next stage, you need to select the 3D printer that you want to use with your Sonic Pad. However, not only do you need to select the model, but you also need to select the processor that is used with your particular 3D printer. The only way to do this is to gain access to the control board, find the processor and then read what's written on it as well as the control board itself. Only then, once you've put everything back together, can you progress onto the next stage of setup. To me, plug and play is literally plugging something in and it's ready to use. By that definition, the Sonic Pad is not plug and play. What the setup process is though, is pretty well explained in the manual. If you have one of the Creality 3D printers that are supported by default, then once you have the control board and processor information, the rest of the setup is all pretty painless. There are quite a few steps though, which is why I decided to create a series of video guides to make the whole process as easy as possible. You can find the playlist for those videos in the description below if you want help setting up your Sonic Pad. If you have one of the few Creality models that isn't supported, it doesn't mean that you can't use the Sonic Pad with your printer, just that you'll have to jump through a few hoops to get it all working. The same is true if you have a non-Creality printer. That's right, the Sonic Pad can be used to control non-Creality printers as well. The setup process is just a little bit more involved and there wasn't a lot of information out there, so I had to figure a lot out for myself. Again, I cover all of this in my Sonic Pad series, so check out those videos if you want to see how involved setting the Sonic Pad up with your machine might actually be. The reason that the Sonic Pad can be used with all different 3D printers is that it runs open source firmware called Clipper. Reading directly from the Clipper GitHub page, Clipper is 3D printer firmware. It combines the power of a general purpose computer with one or more microcontrollers. What this basically means is that Clipper is software that can use the power of more capable Linux based computers to do more with your 3D printer. Clipper can run on a whole host of different devices like old laptops and smartphones, but the most popular option was a Raspberry Pi. I say was because there's been a global shortage of Raspberry Pis over the last few years and getting hold of one at a reasonable price has been almost impossible. Even if you could get hold of one, the programming involved with setting up a Raspberry Pi to run Clipper and then getting it all working with your 3D printer can seem quite daunting and for many it can lead to a lot of frustration. What Creality have done is take a Raspberry Pi style device and a touchscreen and wrapped it all up in a neat package. They've then done all of the initial work to have Clipper set up and ready to connect to a 3D printer. The only part that you need to do is install new firmware to your 3D printer which the Sonic Pad compiles for you. That's right, to use the Sonic Pad you need to overwrite your 3D printer's firmware. This means that from the point that you set your 3D printer up to run Clipper, you won't be able to use your 3D printer without the Sonic Pad unless you return to your original Marlin firmware or whatever you were using before. This isn't especially difficult, but many people are surprised to see how much of a change using Clipper actually is. Any screen you had in your 3D printer will also no longer work, so be prepared that this is a relatively permanent change. However, if you're willing to spend a little bit of time running through the steps of configuring and setting up your 3D printer with the Sonic Pad, then the benefits massively outweigh any potential setup headaches. Clipper is awesome and it gives you a massive amount of extra control over your 3D printer. 
You can use a camera to monitor your prints remotely, and you can configure absolutely everything about how your 3D printer runs while sitting at your computer using a web browser interface. All of these features are great, but the main reason why many people will invest in a Sonic Pad or any other device running Clipper is speed. If you're anything like me, you love talking to people about 3D printing. For the average person, manufacturing things at home used to be a case of cobbling something together out of wood, or for the more advanced, welding and grinding metal into something resembling what you had in mind. There was a lot of time consuming trial and error, and unless you were supremely skilled, the results were never quite what you had in mind. With 3D printers, what we have now is a precision manufacturing device that can create anything we can dream up to tolerances that even the most skilled carpenters can't achieve. We have machines that can do all this with a press of a button, and we can even create exact copies time and time again. This part of the explanation about 3D printing always amazes anyone who's had to make something themselves, and they start to realise why we're so obsessed with these clever devices. However, what I always dread is what inevitably comes next in the conversation. Wow, they say, that's really impressive. How long does it take to print? <clears throat> About two days. I always wince when I answer that question because whatever the answer is, it always seems too long. What's happening in people's minds is that they're comparing the time it takes you to 3D print that little bracket or Black Panther mask with the time it would take them to just bend a piece of metal to do the same job or to go to a shop and buy the same thing. You can actually see the enthusiasm drain from their eyes as they discount 3D printing as the hobby for them. What we want to be able to say instead is, oh, no time at all, it'll knock that part out in about 20 minutes. No, to capture people's imagination and become a must-have device in every home, what 3D printing needs to do is speed up. This is where Clipper steps in. With the extra processing power something like a Raspberry Pi or Sonic Pad can supply, Clipper is able to push your 3D printing speeds way higher without inducing all of the negative artifacts that you'll get if you just try to crank the speed up on standard Marlin based firmware. To really maximise what Clipper can do, there are a number of parameters that need to be finely tuned, but once done, it can be quite common to reduce print speeds down to about a quarter of the time they would have taken before on a stock machine. Seeing a well-tuned clipper controlled machine is pretty mind-blowing when you've been used to printing things at a snail's pace. Finally, we can stop dreading that how fast is it going Mr. question as we have an impressive answer waiting. So back to the Sonic Pad. As you may have picked up, you can get most of the benefits of running Clipper on a less expensive device. However, I'd only advise going down that route if you already have some experience of Linux or feel confident that you can follow all of the steps involved. You not only have to find a compatible device, screen and power supply for each, but you also have to install a Linux based operating system and then compile a load of parameters to get up and running. The Sonic Pad cuts a lot of corners for you, albeit at a higher price. When it first went on sale, the Sonic Pad was pretty locked down and Creality had restricted root access, which frustrated a lot of advanced users. However, it seems that they've been listening to the community because subsequent updates have opened things up quite a bit, as well as added new machines to the supported list. It's not quite the plug and play solution that Creality are advertising it as, but by following a series of guides like the one I made in my Sonic Pad Basics series, you could be up and running with fast prints within a few hours of receiving your new Sonic Pad. Assuming you already have a 3D printer, the only other thing you might want to consider buying is a camera so that you can view things from afar and record time lapse videos. You're not limited to controlling only one printer with a Sonic Pad either. You can control as many printers as you have spare USB ports and can easily switch between them at any time. There are lots of other features that the Sonic Pad has, but mostly these are Clipper features. It would take too long to run through all of the available Clipper features, but what I can do is tell you what the Sonic Pad does well and not so well. The Sonic Pad does do pretty much all that Creality say it can. In my opinion, it's not plug and play, but it is the simplest solution I've seen to having a 3D printer up and running with Clipper. There are probably exceptions to this, and you will have the easiest time getting set up if you start with a supported Creality 3D printer. Apart from a camera that can be bought for around $20, everything you need comes in the box, including leads to connect your 3D printer, along with a sensor that you can use to calibrate input shaping. Input shaping is a feature that removes ghosting from the surface of prints and allows you to push speeds even higher. The Sonic Pad has Wi-Fi connectivity, a nice responsive touchscreen, and looks a lot neater than pretty much all the other options I've seen. The Sonic Pad has a 64-bit CPU, 2GB of RAM, and 8GB of ROM, so it's powerful enough to do everything it needs to. 
I notice that my camera stream has a very low frame rate when viewed from a browser, but that could easily be down to the distance I have my sonic pad from my router. I have my 3D printers in my garage and my routers in my house about 10 meters away, so the connection's pretty good considering. I've had a couple of instances where it seems to have forgotten my Wi-Fi password, but other than that, it's been very reliable. Some people on Facebook groups and on Reddit have had connection problems when using the supplied USB lead between their printer and sonic pad, so it may be an idea to replace this if you have any connection problems. Some of the other things you can do with a sonic pad are setting macros, so you can initiate more than one command with a single button press. You can preview what your model will look like before printing it, and you can access everything from a computer or smartphone if you're on the same network. There's currently no easy way that I know of to access your sonic pad when you're not on the same network as it. I've found the sonic pad a much simpler way of using Clipper with a 3D printer and achieving high quality, high speed results. It is more expensive, but in return, the world of Clipper firmware has now been opened up to those of us who don't have the time or desire to learn about Linux-based operating systems and bespoke setups. Also, since its release, the features have been improved through firmware updates and the price has come down. Geek buying usually have some of the best prices, and with the added discount you get for being one of my viewers, you can now pick up the Sonic Pad at a great price. I think that running Clipper is one of the best upgrades you can make to a 3D printer, and the Sonic Pad now gives us mortal folk access to all of the benefits without all of the research. If you already have a Sonic Pad, then let me know what you think of it in a comment below. If you want to jump straight into the first video in my Sonic Pad Basics series, then click here. Or if you want to make sure that you can find the videos again when your Sonic Pad does arrive, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching.